Ready, Ram. Thank you. Ooh. Awesome. Thank you. So welcome to this week's TOC. Uh, we've got a, a couple of uh, items on the agenda, as well as the regular standings on there. So we've got reviewing actions from last week, a review of outstanding PRs, a final call for maintenance of Stratos, uh, a CF on Kubernetes working group update, including naming update, and any other business. Has anyone got anything to add at this point? No. Okay. So in terms of actions from last week, we've got the TOC to review uh, the PR workflow RFC, which I will just grab the link and let's get chat up and paste it in there. So that was the, the first one, which I think we're pretty much there on with that one. It's only David that's not had a look at that one as yet. That's all right. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think there's anything con controversial there at all. Yeah, you don't need to wait for my approval. Uh, I obviously want to move in favor of this direction. Okay, cool. Um, and then there was the GitHub Teams and Access. We'll just post that there which Eric, I spotted that you've still got your changes on there to be incorporated. I think that was just a typo that I noticed uh, yesterday when I was looking at these. There was a fragment of the template that was still present in the document. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm kind of inclined to suggest that given the nature of that one, I think just committing that would be absolutely fine as it's it's an obvious obvious what's happened there so i think that's perfectly fine to do um, yeah that sounds um, good uh, i think i'll just go ahead and do that now cool. all right so i was going to say i was going to leave that in your more than capable hands so. well the github ui just makes it so easy i know it's great <laughs> okay cool uh, so then the next one was having a nosy at the acceptance script, which I did see that you had a, a look at, uh, Eric, on there. And as we've got some RFCs that are, are approved, feel free to give it a, a spin. Has anyone got any other thoughts on, on that or looked at it? I mean, I'm kind of taking your word for it that it works on your test cases, Lee. Uh, that's uh, so as we can... far as I got. So yeah, we can yeah. test it into real things now. <laughs> also, this this feels like it's more like automation. Like I don't know if like we need full consensus on all of those things. I don't know. Yeah. As much as anything, it's more making right. sure that I I hadn't made a bad case. <laughs> yeah, I approved it as well. Then. <clears throat> have okay. one more vote on it. Cool. And then the last one in the PLs for us to review as part of this one is uh, the project roadmap and visibility, which we have got universal approval on. So again, another one just to script and, and make sure that that does the right thing and merge in. Cool. I think one thing in general, when we're looking through these, we should make sure that we're adhering to the stated RFC process and yes. trying to declare a formal comment period um, for any of those when, yeah. when discussion has died down. I think you know if, we, if we've got unanimous consent explicitly via approvals from the TOC, then you know that, that's good. That's all we need to get to during the comment period, depending on the, the scope of the RFC. So this one would be good to pull in immediately, I think, because we yeah. have that. I think these ones are slightly odd because they predate the RFC period. So most of the, uh, the discussion has already happened on them. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, maybe some good opportunities for practice and getting used to the sequence so that we're comfortable with the process when there's something slightly more controversial, should that ever arise. 
Indeed. And that's our last one. Ah, yes. Uh, Stefan. Yeah. How did the advertising of Diego and logging metrics subgroup within SAP? I, I advertised like hell, and uh, both of the team leads uh, promised that they um, have an interest um, to uh, establish uh, contributors. I think Stefan Lai was already in contact with Amelia, and uh, Plamen from the Diego team uh, will probably do that uh, as soon as he has a reasonable candidate. So there's an interest uh, to build up commit us from their teams and uh, yeah, it will just take a little bit of time. Okay. Cool. So have you let the, uh, you've let Amelia know the additional names then? Yep, I can send them to you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So that is all the actions from last week. Unless I've missed anything. Okay, so we've got a few PRs that are open uh, for us to have a look at that are, aren't directly working group. So the first one we've got is adding metric store release to app, app runtime uh, platform working group. So apparently this was currently not, it, it's currently not in any working group, but uh, Amelia is claiming it. So I don't think there's any particular issue with, with that on our side. It does make me question, are there any other unowned things that should be owned though? There's approximately a hundred repositories that are not officially archived or in a working group at this point. I did a quick like scan. I, I'll share that. I'll, I'll make a spreadsheet and I'll share that with the TOC at some point in the next week or so. Um, but yeah, I mean, I assume half of those could be archived or more, um, yeah. but, but there's definitely, uh, Decent number. Okay. Brilliant. But yeah, I, I did don't see this as being a controversial thing at all. So I'm quite happy to put my tick on that one. Uh, and then uh, I'm actually going to just mentally juggle this order at the moment. So machine passable working groups is the next one. There we are. That works just before the other one. Otherwise, I need to rebase again. <laughs> yes, it is, it is getting a bit kind of like it would be nice just to get this one go. Because, uh, yeah, there's a rebase already. I think it's been out for a week and we've got a quorum of TOC approvals. So we could just merge this one in. Uh, once the, once the, Urge conflicts fixed. Oh, there's still okay. <laughs> no, it's gained <laughs> uh, again. Uh. <laughs> right. Um, just when Ruben, you, just when we thought the every given was unwedged, it's uh, still on a sandbar. Ruben, we'll fix it. Just fix it and, and hit that button, and, and that's oh, cool. <laughs> I'll make sure it, it's done during this this call. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll come back to this. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay, then the, the more interesting one is this one, which is removing the Stratos mention from the charter, which kind of leads us into the next point at the same time, that Stratos is an unowned item as present. Uh, it's been, what? Well, what was it April last year when the last commit was made to it? And there are some issues with it bit rotting at present. So app runtime interfaces are saying that's not us. So the question is, what do we do with it at this point? I mean, I, I think we should do what we've done with other projects where we know there had previously been active maintainers that have uh, decided not to maintain it anymore. Mm. We can put out a final call on CFDev and another fora to see yep. if anyone is willing to pick it up, uh, especially if they know they have an interest in using it. If we don't hear anything in a couple of weeks, then we say, okay, well, let's get an archived. We can always undo that. Someone comes out of the woodwork and wants to pick it back up. I think the PR that 
Greg made is just um, correcting an oversight from mm. when we removed it from the repo list to begin with uh, for app runtime interfaces. Anyway, we just missed that mention of it. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that one. So I, I don't see any problem with uh, this one progressing forwards. Okay. And what's that one? So um, in terms of putting out the, the final call for maintenance of Stratos, are you, are you happy to go ahead with that, Eric? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I can do that. Um, I will probably just copy one of Chris's emails in the past yeah. about like kubectf. Yep, cool. So I'll capture that as an action then for this week. Has anyone got any other thoughts on the Stratos scenario? It's a good name for a Star Trek episode. <laughs> okay, cool. So that then moves us on to um, the CF on Kubernetes working group update. So uh, time to hand over. Uh, the... Yeah, it's it's me again. Uh, okay, what, what do you want to know? No, I'm kidding. I have actually prepared something. Uh, so I'm going to introduce the group very briefly and then maybe talk about like how we've organized work so far. Uh, given the peculiar structure of, uh, of the group, then see what we have lined up next, and then maybe have some uh, some asks for, for the TOC. Uh, so, okay, the group. Group is currently called uh, CF on Kates. Uh, we are planning a rename, uh, and uh, we have democratically chosen a new name. And uh, if people have time slash are willing to do it, I actually have, uh, I can show you a spreadsheet with like actually the, the actual votes and the uh, Excel formula that determined the winner, if, <laughs> if, we, if you want. Um, so this new, we have a new name. I don't know if we should mention it, but we're basically trying to figure out if, if it's legally viable. And if it is, then uh, I guess we'll carry on and rename everything. Um, I mean, I, I don't know if we should rename the group, but the definitely the project we have, the, our only project is called CF Kate's Controllers at the moment. It's our great name, uh, although it's very explicit. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, the, that's the only project that we, that we have in the group. In terms of people, we are, I think, 12 engineers. Um, most of these, in, I think eight out of 12 uh, are in the US. And then there's four engineers, myself included, in the EMEA time zones. Uh, we have, uh, I'm in Italy, we have some, someone in London, and then we have two people in Sofia in Bulgaria. And uh, we are split across VMware and SAP. So we have two people uh, from SAP. Everyone else is from VMware. And yeah, I can give you links to our... Uh, Slack channel and uh, our forum notes. We meet every other Tuesday. I think uh, the event is already in the CF calendar. If anyone is interested and wants to come and have a chat. And in terms of process, uh, we have this big challenge of having pretty much no time overlap between the two like halves of the team. So like uh, the US people are many of them concentrated on the West Coast and we are in EMEA, which means like we really have very little overlap. So we, uh, we're trying to figure out ways, like every day we're trying to, to figure out new ways of like, uh, you know, share the context and collaborate effectively, even though we don't have a lot of face time. Uh, at the moment, what we've settled with is, uh, the, so the, the two halves of the team pair in, in, inside of them. So like, the people in the US pair between them and we and me are pair between us. Um, and But we always make PRs at the end of, like so everything that, get, that goes into the main branch needs to go there via PR. And um, most PRs actually get reviewed locally. So you, you've paired with someone, that person is perfectly uh, capable of just approving your PR. Uh, but we've got into the habit of uh, cross-reviewing PRs that we think 
might be particularly controversial or particularly just you know things that we want everyone to have a look at and that's something that's a habit that we got into kind of naturally because we realized sometimes things would go in and we were a bit surprised so like when when we feel like something will be either surprising or we want just want like uh, to make sure that there is like consensus on something we just uh, cross review uh, to get consensus like on bigger things, we've introduced a proposals process. So we have uh, this proposals board and we write documents that people can review, comment, and uh, we, we, we look like we, we wait to achieve consensus before we, uh, we move on like with big chunks of work. And uh, that's pretty much it. In, in terms of like cross collaboration, another thing we've been trying to do is like, so the different the two halves of the team work on like distinct distinct epics. Uh, we don't overlap much in terms of scope, but that's kind of led to some siloing, and we realized that like we didn't have a lot of context about things uh, that the other half of the team was working on. So we're trying to swap stories periodically. So like every week, I pick up a story from our from from our epics, and uh, you know they give it to them, and they give us one story. And we're trying to see, we're actually trying to see if we can make more, of, we can do more of this. It doesn't have to be one story per week. Uh, and see if like we can build, like we can share more context. Because at the moment, I think like, especially in, like on the MIA side, we've been working a lot on the authorization side of things on the, and like we know a lot about it, but like we don't know uh, as much about everything else on the project and vice versa. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, this has in terms of like uh, progress, I think we've been making a, a lot of good progress. So this has worked. Uh, there's still definitely room, like I guess, for more collaboration and like more like spreading more context. But we're we're pretty happy so far. Uh, in terms of next steps, uh, we are planning a v a zero point one release. Uh, at the moment, I think the biggest block blocker is. Uh, uh, the, the way we've implemented and introduced authorization to the project um, has led to us having many endpoints which were the, actually implemented before we had a, an authorization solution in place. So now we have to go and back and retrofit a whole bunch of like authorization code in, uh, in a bunch of endpoints. Uh, once we're done with that, and we know that every endpoint is actually authorized properly, uh, will be confident enough to release 0 0.1. Uh, there is a milestone in GitHub. So if you go on our project, uh, there is a milestone called V0.1, which you can follow. There's still maybe, I don't know, a, a few stories to be, to be worked on. Once those are done, uh, I think we're going to release and people should be able to start playing with the thing and, uh, and give us feedback and hopefully also get involved. Like, I think, one thing that makes us different from other groups is also that the, basically this is a this was a greenfield product built from from scratch and we haven't really been ready for external contributions uh, because like the thing is we we built it from scratch and uh, we need to get to a certain like level I guess of uh, of maturity before we accept external contributions. I think after zero point one there should that it's, there's going to be a lot more room for people to just jump in and take a look. In terms of features, so what we I think what we're gonna release with 0 0.1 is gonna be a work in CF push, fully based on you know, native uh, Kubernetes uh, on the native Kubernetes stack, or based on CRDs, etc. So not pre nothing of these of CF of VMs has survived this thing. Um, so that's what it's gonna be in 0 0.1. So immediately after, we're thinking of. Uh, 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 adding, for example, CRDs for orgs and spaces. At the moment, we're using uh, Kubernetes namespaces and the hierarchical namespaces. We want to introduce dedicated CRDs to implement like custom behavior. Uh, we're working on user-provided service instances, and we're working on like basic observability metrics, stuff like that. And uh, later on, who knows? Even like we want support like full-blown uh, OSBAPI brokers. Uh, we want to support the Kubernetes service bindings specification. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Networking-wise, we 
we're waiting for the Kubernetes Gateway API to come out so that we can like generically support any Kubernetes networking solution as long as it implements that API. Uh, also, and in, we are in general as like as the, the original vision of this product was to build something that could rely as much as possible on what's already in the Kubernetes ecosystem and potentially offer ways for people to just choose uh, implementations for us for like the core behaviors of the platform. Uh, so just like I've mentioned networking, we might want to do the same thing for, for workload orchestration. So stuff like, I know, allow people to decide which component actually schedules their workloads instead of, at the moment we're reusing Arini from CFO Kates, uh, but that might change in the future. Uh, so this is what I had prepared to say. In terms of um, help from the TOC, I think the two main things are uh, first, what I mentioned before, uh, in terms of like uh, uh, engineering contributions from the different uh, com from different companies, uh, it looks like the, the SAP presence is kind of shrinking because I guess people like leave the team because they are they're, they're usually like we had like I think four or five SAP engineers at some point. Then people leave, go to other companies, do uh, go do other things. We haven't had people to replace them, uh, so. Uh, that's a shout out, I guess, to you know any company who wants to give us engineers, give it to them, to us. Um, and uh, in terms of the name thing, yeah, the, the, the name is there. So we've we've done, I think, uh, we've, we've voted, we've we've done the short list, we've voted, etc. Uh, I guess it it could be interesting to see if uh, like how far that process is in terms of like the, the approvals. Because if this, I think the sooner we unlock it, the better. We can start renaming everything. We can start pushing the new name out. And uh, although I don't know how far we are from zero one, honestly, uh, but like, so I, I think it's that we should definitely have it before zero one. But if we, I think if we have it sooner, it doesn't hurt. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Questions. Uh, Chris, uh, have we had any updates from LF Legal on vetting any of the names? No, the I followed list? up with them. Uh, yeah, I've asked LF Legal just for like, it, you know, to advise on what their proper protocols are for doing due diligence and trademark stuff. I mean, a quick look at, um, you know, domains doesn't look like one of the big obvious domains is available, but, you know, that's not, I don't think we necessarily need its own website very necessarily. So, um, but I, but I I, uh, I followed up with them on that. I escalated that. So hopefully I'll hear back this week about that and get that rolling. Yeah. I think the main was we can just pick a second level one. Like it will be perfect to have like yeah. name.cloudfoundry.org is going yep. to be perfect. Totally. So that we <laughs> keep, it's still clear that we are Cloud Foundry. Yeah. Uh, I think regarding the, the naming of the, uh, uh, the naming of the working group, I would I think I'd be, I would lean towards recommending keep the working group name what it is right cf on mm -hmm. just in case there is another project that kind of falls it's like a little bit yeah exactly you don't want to couple you know, working group and, and project it is nicely because yeah it is nicely descriptive mm -hmm. for working group name so have the project called that it's fine for there to be one project under this working group but i would keep the yeah name yeah agreed. yeah that makes sense mm. Yeah, and once the name is out, of course, like uh, we'll we will need a hand, like a, a hand, just getting the name out there yeah, and getting the absolutely. word out there. Uh, but yeah, exciting stuff. Yeah, it is. And that that core CF push workflow that that's is that pretty solid at this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, except save saving authorization, as I said, uh, it's uh, it seems to be working. Uh, the we we are trying to support two ways of consuming the product. So we are supporting the old, like the old, the, this, the official CF v3 API, and we are also trying to offer like a way to consume the product via plain Kubernetes APIs. So via custom, like via via Kubernetes resources. So given how fine grained uh, the original v3 API is, so an, an app push is actually involves the orchestration of, a, of various resources. So it means it's not as comfortable to use 
via CRDs, just because you have to create a whole bunch of resources and then observe them. And then when one is ready, you have to hook it up into the other one. And the, but like if you use the V3 REST API, then the CLI does all of this for you and it works pretty smoothly, I think. Has anyone got any other questions? Um, yeah, there was some. Um, Diego uh, had a call, uh, question in the uh, foundational working group meeting about um, ac giving access to teams, uh, like GitHub teams, to a specific repo. Um, they have issues where, like, I know that approvers are named person, people, right, that have certain uh, permissions, uh, but they still have, like, a, a need for, um, yeah, they, they do cryogenics, so they, they take care of many repos that are across working groups, so it's, they experience it as being painful to uh, get approvers on all these different working groups so yeah uh, i told them that it's probably best to create an rfc for that um but just wanted to put that out there that this is and he also mentioned that there's at least some precedent at, at like the diego uh, in the diego space i don't know uh, that there's some somewhere a place where there's a team <laughs> But yeah, that, that could be something that we might need to tackle. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, has anyone got anything else for this week? I think in general that, that thing with the uh, metrics server or something that that PR that was uh, because of us they, they had someone uh, that joined that team and they wanted to add that, that person to Cloud Foundry uh, the GitHub org and then they found oh <laughs> which which tech lead should be responsible and then it was like oh <laughs> it's not in any of the uh, working groups hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, hopefully we can narrow those down with Chris's magic spreadsheet. Soon, yeah. I'll get, that, I'll get that later this week. Yeah. Oh. Uh, also, I uh, rebased the PR, the front of machine parsable one. Uh, Quick, press the merge button. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Uh, and if we have that merged, uh, we then actually have all the data we need to, to get that list of things that are not uh, in a working group because we have every, all the repos that exist or should be in org slash cloud foundry, that YAML, and then the machine work uh, parsable working groups list. We can diff them basically with some JQ magic. Right, it's merged. Perfect, <laughs> thanks. Just, just get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It's like 11 other PRs that I think we can tell to reformat their things now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm just making a note of Chris's action to send over the spreadsheet of orphaned repos. And the other action we've got is Eric to send around an email to CFDev um, to see if we can find any Stratos maintainers. And um, are there any other actions that I've potentially missed in there? So I uh, had a small thing. Um, so Daniel from the Paketo our team had reached out saying uh, they've kicked off a discussion on GitHub about the Paketo 2022 roadmap. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to sort of help uh, spread the message about the initiative. So I've 
posted a link uh, on chat i'll also leave a link on the youtube um, description and in the toc notes and other places uh, but if folks have um, opinions ideas thoughts um, i guess you're all welcome to share them with the um, group the paketo group on the github discussion space so Hmm. Uh, I think we should also see about coordinating um, the next working group discussion for next week, which I think would be Picado anyway. So maybe this yes. is good timing. Yes, that does sound good. I I do think you, you'd actually pinged pretty much everybody, Eric. Yeah, I, I pinged all the working group leads for the remainder of the cycle in yep. the expected sequence uh, on that Slack thread. So we can, I suppose, keep coordinating there. Okay, thank you very much for that link. Okay, so we'll go up that there. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Has anybody got anything else for this week? No? Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, and uh, keep well and safe all. Yep. Thanks, everyone. See you. Bye -bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.